After six years of research, we have finally published a paper that identified lots of new targets for treating chronic sickle cell disease pain. How did we do it? First, we took poop from sickle cell mice and control mice and compared the number and types of bacteria in it. We found that bacteria in sickle cell poop were different from the ones found in healthy control poop. So next, we transplanted healthy control poop into sickle cell mice and found that the sickle cell mice had their pain alleviated. Science. Turns out healthy poop has high levels of a healthy or probiotic bacterium called Ackermansia mucinophila in it. When we give pure Ackermansia to sickle cell mice, we can also alleviate their pain. Next, we took poop from sickle cell mice and transferred it into healthy control mice and found that that transferred pain. These control mice are not catching sickle cell disease because sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder that's not contagious. When we dug a little deeper, we found out that the sickle cell mice had really high levels of bilirubin in their gut, and it comes from red blood cells bursting. This process happens a lot in people and mice with sickle cell disease. Bilirubin can activate a protein called TRPM2. TRPM2 is found on neurons that are part of the vagus nerve. This structure runs from the gut all the way up to the brainstem. By turning on TRPM2 with bilirubin, we're activating this gut-to-brain signal and turning on the pain alarm in the brain. Lastly, we collaborated with a sickle cell clinician and found that people with sickle cell disease have low levels of bacteria that break down bilirubin in their gut. This means that there's probably an even larger buildup of bilirubin in these individuals that can lead to trip M2 activation and drive pain. This science is really important to me because it lays the groundwork for development of therapies to help people who are suffering from chronic sickle cell disease pain.